Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. First thing first, let's get high on tea. This week's tea is Feng Huang Dan Cong, Phoenix Single Stem Oolong Tea, a unique tea from the Oolong family. This tea is from Chaozhou, Guangdong Province, an area with a long history of producing high quality tea. Feng Huang Dan Cong tea grows in Feng Huang Shan or Phoenix Mountain. Single stem is the way tea farmers grow and process this type of tea. To brew Feng Huang Dan Cong, the water temperature should be between 95 to 100 degrees Celsius. The brewing time should be less than 3 seconds or the tea leaf would be damaged and the tea taste will not be optimal. You heard me right, not 3 minutes, but 3 seconds. Of course, when the water temperature is lower, you can brew the tea a bit longer. This is the shape of the tea leaf, a long leaf with a very dark color due to fermentation. There are more than 50 flavors of Feng Huang Dan Cong, including Cape Jasmine, an osmansa, orchid, and uh, cinnamon. This one is a Cape Jasmine flavor. I have a few cans of uh, Dan Cong tea in different flavors and uh, I like all of them. As for the health benefits, this tea is uh, full of uh, polyphenols, vitamins, and uh, amino acids. I enjoy drinking Feng Huang Dan Cong more for its strong and unique flavor than for its health benefits. I'm sure you all will love this tea as well. Remember to use water boiled to 95 to 100 degrees Celsius and brew it for less than 3 seconds. Let me know in the comments if you have uh, tried this tea before and also what tea you are drinking this week. Now, let's get on with the agenda for today. Today, I will introduce Men or Gate, a term popular in not only the internal styles but also in other styles of uh, Chinese Kung Fu. You may have come across the term Men while reading martial art documents in Chinese language. If you do not understand the meaning of this term, you will have a hard time understanding those documents. Topics covered in today's video include first, men in Chinese language, second, men in martial art, third, men in the internal styles, fourth, key principles of a men, fifth, misperceptions of a man, 6th demonstration, 7th correction of a student's practice, and 8th takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. First, man in the Chinese language. This is the Chinese character for, for the word gate. Originally, this character in the old styles of writing looked just like a door. Over time, this character got simplified to this point. So, this character can mean quite a few things including door or gate, key point, family, school, style, category, attack, and defense. This is a simple character that can mean many things depending on the context. For example, when we talk about a school of thought, men can be used, such as Roman or Confucius school. However, in common parlance, this word simply means door or gate. Topic 2. Men in martial art. The term men can mean two different things in martial arts. First, men can mean a style of practice. For example, instead of saying Xing Yi style, in older days people would say Xing Yi Men. Daozen can also be called Dao Men or Daoist style. 
Second, men can also mean gate, a martial art term used to describe a specific concept. So, what is a gate? Gate is used to describe a space created by the body structure. Originally, gate was used in Chinese military formation and was later adopted by martial artists to describe different body areas. Two pairs of uh, gates are used in martial arts. They are first, Zhongmen and Pianmen, second, Neimen and Weimen. Let me explain them one by one. First, Zhongmen and Pianmen. Zhong means middle, Men means gate. Put together, Zhongmen means the central line of your opponent's body. Pian means side, so Pianmen means the side areas of your opponent's body. Other terms used to describe Pianmen include Bianmen and Cemen, since Bian and Ce mean the same as Pian or side in Chinese. The body center line or Zhongmen it's the most important area because there are important organs along this line. Even more importantly, if this center line gets attacked successfully by your opponent, your body's martial structure may be destroyed as the central line of the body structure helps to maintain the body's balance in a combat situation. That's why all martial art styles have many techniques to attack the opponent's central line or Zhongmen. The primary importance of Zhongmen does not imply Pianmen can be neglected. Pianmen is also very important. The Pianmen area is very vulnerable, so a well-executed attack on the Pianmen area can be fatal. So, it is important for any practitioner to be able to define against attacks to both the middle gate of Zhongmen and the side gate of Pianmen. Now, let's move on to Neimen and Weimen. Second, Neimen and Weimen. Nei means inner, while Men means gate. So, Neimen means inner gate which according to the commonly agreed definition is the space inside of two arms. For example, when we hold this posture, this space is called Neimen. Y means outer, so Yimen means outer gate, or the space that is on the outer side of the arms. For example, when we hold this posture, the that space is called Weimen. Having understood those two pairs of terms, it is easy to see that in order to attack the Zhongmen or middle gate, it should pass through Neimen or inner gate. So, attacking the inner gate is one of the approaches for destroying the structure. Likewise, you need to destroy the outer gate or Weimen in order to attack Pianmen or side gate. Bear in mind that there are just some common principles. At an advanced level, a practitioner can destroy the outer gate to attack the middle gate and also destroy the inner gate to attack the side gate. Everything depends on your practice. I will introduce some important principles later in this video. Now, let's look at the concept of a gate in the internal styles. Topic 3. Men in the internal styles. As mentioned earlier in this video, all martial art styles focus on training to attack and defend these gates. The three internal styles are no exception. For example, to attack the Zhongmen or middle gate, a continuous strike is a commonly used technique. Throughout history, 
Many famous Xingyi masters used lian huan bong quan or linking bong fist for this purpose, and this technique has now become an iconic Xingyi technique. Ba Gua and Tai Chi use similar techniques as well. For example, San Chuan Zhang or Three Piercing Palm of Ba Gua and San Huan Zhang or Changing Palms Three Times of Chen Style Tai Chi are popular techniques for the same purpose. At the same time, different internal styles tend to focus on different strategies in terms of choosing between middle gate or side gate. Let me explain. Xin Yi, the most aggressive of the three internal styles, really emphasizes attacking the middle gate. There is a very popular Xin Yi proverb, Ta Bu Zhong Men Duo Di Wei, or stepping into the middle gate so that to seize the opponent's place, which I have introduced in one of my Xing Yi introduction videos. Any Xing Yi movement that involves a 45 degree stepping in a form or a routine is typically used for attacking the opponent's side gate or Pianmen, while a movement with the straight stepping is meant for striking the middle gate or Zhongmen. Ba Gua is unique in that it mainly focuses on attacking the side gate. In order to achieve this objective, a Ba Gua practitioner needs to practice Ba Gua walking, which is specifically designed to achieve this goal. As for Tai Chi, even though it may look like a very gentle style, Tai Chi, in reality, focuses on attacking the middle gate more than the side gate, similar to Xing Yi. A good Tai Chi practitioner can usually neutralize the incoming attack and strike the opponent's middle gate simultaneously. So, the soft part of Tai Chi practice is actually meant to practice the neutralization part while movements with powerful striking force are meant to destroy the middle gate. Understanding the preferred striking gate of the style helps us understand the style better. So, pay attention to different gates while training, and you will find out more about the relationship between a style's movements and its striking strategies in the context of a gates. Now, let's look at some important principles of a men or gate in the next topic. Topic 4 Key Principles of a Men Men or gate in the context of a martial art practice is not only a physical space but also a concept. Also, understanding the term men based on the perspective of a concept instead of only a physical area will help a practitioner become more effective and efficient in their practice. Also, the introduction of key principles of a concept will elevate your understanding of a physical practice. In today's video, I'd like to introduce two important principles related to men. They are first, nei men bu bi, wai men bu kai, or do not close inner gate, do not open outer gate. Second, zhong men zhan, pian men qiang, seize the middle gate, grasp the side gate. Let me explain them one by one. First, nei men bu bi, wai men bu kai, or do not close inner gate, do not open outer gate. I formulated this proverb in order to clearly explain the relationship between gate and strikes. Bu means no or without. Bi means close. Kai means open. Put it together, it means that when attacking the inner gate, you should try to destroy it and keep it in an open state. When attacking the outer gate, 
you should move the opponent's interception arm toward their own body and not let it open. In other words, it is preferable neither to close the inner gate when it is opened, nor to open the outer gate when it is closed. In general, <clears throat> when dealing with inner and outer gates, a practitioner should follow this principle. However, at an advanced level, since there are continuous attacks toward an opponent, an opened inner gate can be closed in the following attack, but it should be treated as two separate movements. So, in one movement, in dealing with inner and outer gates, neither it should be opened or closed. Second, Zhong Men Zhan, Pian Men Qiang, seize the middle gate, grasp the side gate. Zhan means seize and Qiang means grasp. While force and speed are equally important in any martial art practice, there needs to be some differentiation when it comes to using force and speed against the middle and side gates. Traditionally, when dealing with the middle gate, martial artists often use another word, pu, which means to break or to destroy. In Chinese, it hints at the importance of a strong force. So, a strong force matters more than speed against the middle gate. At the same time, speed matters more than force against the opponent's side gate. In combat situations, it is usually very challenging to attack the side gate. So, finding and grasping an opportunity to attack the side gate emphasizes the mind side of grasping, which implies the importance of speed. This is why the traditional usage of the word qiang or grasp, which means quickly reacting when the opportunity emerges in a combat situation, is appropriate. So, this proverb emphasizes the different mind size and the techniques suitable for dealing with middle and side gates. Those were two key principles of men. There are many others that I will save for the future. Topic 5. Misperceptions of men. Any concept, no matter how simple, has the potential to be misperceived. The concept of men or gate is no exception. In today's video, I will clarify a common misperception. Some people believe that the middle gate of Zhongmen is so important in a combat situation that it's best to move it away from the opponent by turning the body 90 degrees. Turning the body 90 degrees to prevent direct exposure of the chest area or the middle gate to the opponent is often perceived to be a safe posture. Well, that is not true in reality. Side gate or pianmen can be critical in combat situations as well. A skilled opponent can always find your middle gate or central line and initiate an attack on it. Furthermore, by turning the upper body 90 degrees, the back arm is effectively rendered useless as it cannot serve its intended function. It is no different from having that arm tied behind your back. So, moving your center line away from the opponent by turning your upper body by 90 degrees is not at all a good approach. Dynamic handling of all the gates is the key factor in combat. Topic 6 Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate a Bagua exercise used to practice San Chuan Zhang or Three Piercing Palm. 
I have modified this movement by adding a more circular motion based on the original San Chuan Zhang practice in order to improve the training effectiveness. I hope you will adopt this way of San Chuan Zhang exercise as a single movement training. So, extend the shoulder and then we'll move straight to the middle gate. Topic 7 Correction of a Student's Practice. Okay, now let my student practice Xing Yi Bong Quan and then I correct his uh, movement. Slowly. Two, three, four, turn. Okay, one, two, then. Okay, now let's go back. Uh, first of all, the movement is pretty good, but we can improve a little bit, okay? And uh, in practice, I always focus on improvement. So let's uh, start from, uh, from this posture, okay? So let's you face to here, yes. Let's start from here. First of all, you do the first movement. Okay, now move back. First of all, today's movement, you should be keep the stance. Why, why, why you yeah, first of all, here should bend a little bit. Second, here, a little bit flat, elbow sink down. Then to the back fist, here should turn a little bit more. Right. And then move toward the center line. Then before, before you, you punch, should extend, then punch. Right. Then second, when you punch, have a little bit downward motion. Downward, little bit downward motion in the end. Right. Then now turn. Let's correct the turning movement. One, two, three. Okay, for the for this posture, it's like this. Palm extend a little bit further. Yes. So palm extend further. Then back foot step forward, change to fist, then punch. Yes. Again, turn. One, two, three. Weight put the weight more back a little bit. Then, right, it's good. Thank you. Topic 8 Take Aways. First, men in the Chinese language originally used mean door, but now has multiple meanings, including door or gate, family, school, style, and so on. Second, men. In martial arts can mean either style or gate. Gate is a specific area created by the body structure. There are two important pair of gates in martial arts. First, Zhong Men and Pian Men, middle gate and side gate. Second, Nei Men and Wai Men, inner gate and outer gate. Three, all three internal styles focus on attacking one of the gate or men. Xing Yi and Tai Chi emphasize striking the Zhong Men, while Ba Gua emphasizes striking the Pian Men. Understanding the preferred striking gate of a style is useful to help us understand the style better. Fourth, key principles of a men. First, Nei Men Bu Bi, Wai Men Bu Kai. Do not close inner gate. Do not open outer gate. Second, Zhong Men Zhan, Pian Men Qiang. Seize the middle gate, grasp the side gate. Fourth, a common misperception is that the middle gate or Zhong Men is so important in combat situations that it's best to move it away from the opponent by turning the body 90 degrees. Remember, this is a misperception and dynamic handling of gates is the best approach in combat situations. Make sure to check out the demonstration and the student's practice correction section. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.